If you watched my last theory video, then you might remember me making the point of calling out Roxy as not being a node. If you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go check it out at some point, as I talked about a few other things as well. But right now, we're talking about Roxy, why she isn't a node, what she actually is, and why the Mimic wants her deactivated, because I think I actually know all of those questions and the answers to them. To catch you up quickly, when I played through Ruin, I noticed a few things that clearly separated Roxy from the other animatronics, all of which were noticeable with the Vanny mask. Firstly, Chica, Monty, and the endoskeletons, when you have the mask equipped, are visible as purpley, distorted figures, indicating that they are under the control of Mixer, who is trying to keep Cassie from deactivating the security nodes, and all of that stuff to do with the Mimic. Meanwhile, Roxy is not only fully visible, with the mask on, but missing parts of her casing are replaced with a highlighted green version of them sort of thing on her face, her arm, and her tail. She isn't connected to Mixer like the other animatronics. I think that's fairly obvious, which is interesting because that would because ex that explains why even in the sections of Ruin, which are clearly meant to be Roxy's areas, if you get caught by Mixer when he summons an animatronic, he doesn't summon Roxy. He calls Chica or Monty. Not her. It can't call her because she isn't connected to it. At least as far as I can tell. There might be an instance where he does call her, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. That's why in that area where you're trying to deactivate the four nodes and you have to go on the cameras while he's coming after you, he summons Chica and then Chica sits down in the bathroom. But she is still connected to the Pizza Plexus systems, which is why she is visible with the mask on, but Freddy's body isn't. Because it is still in safe mode, which I believe is offline mode, I think? Unless I'm remembering that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. So then the question is, what is keeping Roxy separate from the Mixer's network and why? Well, what if I were to tell you that the Mimic doesn't have just one personality, but two? One of them, the one that we're very much familiar with, being the one that tries to grab Cassie and do probably murderous things to her, and the other, a good one, if you will, because I can't think of a better word than just a good one, which probably wants to either stop the Mimic or just protect people from it, which is in the Pizza Plexus systems. Do you remember the nightmare own plushies that you could find scattered around the Pizza Plex in Security Breach? The most popular theory on them, brought to us by the good FNAF, came up with the idea that they were supposed to represent an evil version of Charlie, which, at the time, was the best conclusion I think anyone could have come up with, because we didn't have enough evidence. But now, I think it's supposed to represent two different parts of a code occupying the same entity, the Mimic being the nightmare part, and something else, a not evil thing, being the puppet part, also known as Charlie, who is known for protecting people. That's going to come into play later. The fact that Steel Wool put more Nightmare Own plushies in Ruin tells me that there is still some significance to it, and that possibly we hadn't figured it out yet which is what I hope this theory is. Me potentially figuring it out. That'd be pretty cool. If you still doubt that one animatronic having two opposite personalities exists, well, you sweet fool. Guess what? We've seen exactly this thing, almost, basically, before, even in the same game. Can you guess who it is? If you guessed Sun and Moon, also known now as Eclipse, then you guessed correctly. Because there is some strange occurrences going on with him. Something that I noticed after finishing my playthrough with Security Breach recently was that the tragedy and comedy masks were present in both the DLC and the base game. Which was strange to me when I found those, because I was like, that's weird, why these masks? Why are these brought back in ruin? There's many masks that you can find, there's many collectibles that you can find in Security Breach. Why those ones? Then I noticed that there's actually quite a lot of Sun and Moon themed collectibles in Ruin. In fact, I believe there's actually more specifically for those two, even individually, than there is for any other animatronic in the game and not in the game. 
They've got a mask, a plushie, a golden plushie, and a pinata each. I'm pretty sure that's more than any of the others that get any collectibles in Ruin. It's a suspicious amount of items dedicated to those two for no reason, heavy quotation marks there, which is why I think they might be pointing out that there's something similar happening, possibly, with the Mimic. I'm also toying with the idea that what happens with Sun and Moon could be like foreshadowing of what will happen with the Mimic, where we may end up like reuniting the two parts and they sort of work out the differences and become one good entity in some way, but that's... that's pretty unlikely. <laughs> But if that ends up being correct, I'm just going to sit back and be real smug. But I don't think it is going to happen. It's just an idea. It's just a thought I had. I mean, what do I know? I, I haven't spent almost 10 years perfecting the art of theory crafting, like some people have. This is my second attempt. I am not an expert. Don't pretend that I am. I'm not pretending that I am. Now the question you might be asking yourself is how can there be a part of the Moose Code that isn't hell-bent on taking people apart like Lego figures? And where has it been all this time? I was wondering that too, until I watched a video by Rye Toast, which I will be linking in the description and strongly encourage you to check out after this video, or after my last theory video, depending on what you want to do. I'll just give you a brief summary of it. So, he theorized that Henry, never died in the FNAF 6 fire, tried to recreate Charlie using the Mimic program to reconstruct her personality, but something goes wrong and the mimic we are very familiar with is created. I just want to pause for a second to say there are a few inconsistencies with that, the big one being that the whole point of FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator was that Henry was trying to release the souls so that they didn't have to like be stuck in the animatronics anymore, and there was an actual whole part of his speech dedicated to like, saying that Charlie can move on now, she doesn't have to protect people anymore, so... I think I'm going to make a correction to the timeline here. Instead of this happening around after FNAF 6, I feel like this has been more likely to have happened closer to the time that Charlie died, which would be the time when Henry doesn't know that she is possessing the puppet, and the grief of losing her is still really fresh, and would probably be enough to drive him to try and bring her back in the only way he can think how, since he doesn't know that her soul is still there, he uses technology to recreate her personality. Okay, still with me? I hope so. Which also made sense, considering that I think a lot of people are theorizing that the Mimic was created like early on in the FNAF timeline, and yes, I am in fact stating that I think the good part of the Mimic's code is a replica of Charlie's personality, which was created alongside the violent personality of the Mimic. I don't know, maybe it's mimicking Afton, maybe it's like just Henry got really upset that when he realized he was like built, trying to bring back Charlie with robots and stuff and just got really aggressive. I don't know, that's kind of what happened in the books, so that could be what happened here, because there's a lot of overlap with the books now, as opposed to just general ideas being taken across. These seems to be very direct ideas now. So now we've established who this good part of the code is, and well, that kind of explains the motive as well for trying to help. It's like a, a it's a Charlie basically. It's essentially Charlie, so it's gonna behave like Charlie does. Uh, that's my guess at least, I could be very wrong. But how does it go from being a part of the Mimic to either being directly connected to Roxy or just being part of the Pizza Plexus systems keeping Roxy from being controlled by Mixer, I think it would have to be the first one because of the fact that the Mimic wants Roxy deactivated, so maybe it's trying to delete the, or like, permanently remove the code, but it still could just be that it's in, like, the code is in the system of the Pizzaplex, not directly attached to Roxy, but it knows that Roxy's still a threat because she's no longer um, being controlled by anything. I'm just going to interject with a quick correction here from the future. I actually think that, the, uh, upon considering this further, I think that the second option that uh, the this second code or second part of the code is actually just in the pizza plex systems is more likely because it allows it to like manipulate things about the animatronics without actually manipulating them and without them being aware that it's there. Because if it's in the animatronic systems, I feel like they'd probably be more aware of it than they seem to be. So 
it just now seems more likely that it'd be in the system being able to keep Roxy separate while not being observed by anyone. Potentially, again, this is just, just this is this is a pretty out there thought. This whole theory is a bit wild. I think I, I'm a bit biased to be honest. I don't know how reasonable this is, but yeah, it would explain why the mimic wants her wants Roxy deactivated because it knows that the Charlie code is trying to stop Cassie from going down and releasing the mimic, either for Cassie's safety or because it knows the threat the mimic poses to people in general. But again, how does it actually get to Roxy from being trapped down in the room with the Mimic? Or as part of the Mimic, rather. This is kind of where I have to make a guess, because I can't find any actual evidence to draw a conclusion from, as far as I can tell. But my guess would be at some point, the Charlie Code splits off from the Mimic and is able to get into the Pizza Plexus systems. Again... I think that this would have to be the case, because the, the Mimic does clearly have some level of access to the Pizza Plexus systems, but it's a very limited access, because it can it can observe Cassie going through the Pizza Plex and guide her based on where she is. It knows roughly where she is and what she's doing, but it can't directly influence anything other than Helpy. So if the Charlie portion of the code was able to escape, it would probably at a guess, have blocked the exit path it used to stop the Mimic from using the same path. Or, the Mimic is just a really big fan of its endoskeleton and doesn't really want to leave it behind because it can Mimic can use costumes and stuff. I don't know. Why does it leave? Again, I there's no evidence that I can find or that I know of to base this off of. This is just more of a gut feeling. But my guess is that because the Mimic's programming is like, oh, I have to rip arms off of people and stuff like that that maybe it conflicted with the other part where it's like oh well i have to protect people i am charlie i am a good person i don't i'm not violent and maybe it just maybe the mimic decides to delete the other part because they have conflicting goals or maybe it left of its own accord though I, again i'm not sure how so another question to do with timing would be like what has the charlie code been doing all this time since it it must have presumably split off a relatively long time ago, either before the Pizzaplex was built, or very early on while the Pizzaplex was built, or I, I don't really know. There's a lot of timing issues with this, I will admit. I don't have an explanation for it yet. I hope there is an explanation, because it would be a really cool idea that Steel Wall implements as, like, what the actual story is working towards. I think it'd be pretty cool. I do have an idea, though, about why we don't see anything like this happening in Security Breach, but we do see it in Ruin, which, conveniently enough, would also explain Glamrock Bonnie and why he was destroyed. What if he was the first host for the Charlie Code, where he was protected from the influence of Vanny and Glitchtrap, like how Roxy is protected from the influence of Mixer, so that she doesn't attack Cassie, at this point, I don't actually know if Glitchtrap was actually William Afton, or if it's just another version of the Mimic's program mimicking Afton. But if it is another version of the Mimic, that would it would probably be reasonable that it, Vanny, and the Mimic trapped down under the sinkhole would be working together. That's just speculation, really. And if they are, they would probably also try and eliminate the threat to their plan that is one of the animatronics not submitting to their control. I also had an idea that when we deactivate all the caution bots, and thereby deactivate Glamrock Bonnie, it's like it's helping the code back into the system because it's no longer, like, trapped, tied to Glamrock Bonnie, and at that point it goes on to Roxy because it knows that Roxy has a special connection with Cassie, and once it once Roxy figures out that it is Cassie and not Gregory, she will, you know because she is now herself and not being controlled by anything to do pr to either protect the nodes or to capture Gregory, she will be able to be herself again and just protect Cassie. What do you guys think about that though? I, do you, does any of this make sense to any of you? Or do you have like a better idea? I'd love to hear I would love to hear your ideas. I, I really hope that if a lot of people see this video that they all like share their ideas in the comments because I'm very curious about what you all think. Anyway, I think that's actually about everything in this theory. I want to make a few clarifications, though. First of all, 
I don't think that if there is a Charlie code, I don't believe that it is actually directly taking control of animatronics, just keeping them separate from anything that is trying to control them, so that they can be just completely themselves, which is why once Roxy is realizes that it's Cassie, she isn't aggressive. Even when she still thinks it's Gregory, she doesn't actually attack, specifically in that cutscene I'm talking about, She's just really annoyed at Gregory because he kind of threw a go-kart in her face and then stole her eyes. I think anyone would probably be mad about that. And when she grabs Cassie, thinking it's Gregory, she doesn't, like, just straight up attack him. Or rather her, thinking that it's him. She grabs her arm, thinking it's Gregory, again, yells at her to give Roxy her eyes back, as opposed to just straight up killing her. That, to me, is an interesting detail, because maybe Roxy isn't actually trying to hurt Gregory, she's just really confused and scared because she can't see anything. Also, again, there are some timing confu- there is a little timing confusion with this, like, how early on did the code split up with the Mimic and the Charlie part, like, there's- if, if it happened really early, like I think it did when close to Charlie died, then what, how, why have they been together so long without this happening earlier? And I, I don't know, there's a lot of, there is a lot of things that don't quite add up, but I still think that there is some merit to what I'm saying here. I still think there's a chance that what I'm saying has at least some level of validity that I, I might be wrong about some things, but I think the general idea could still be plausible. Anyway, I think that's actually going to be everything now. Uh, regardless of what, how well this video does, I'm pretty happy with it. I've never, I've never really thought that I would be able to create a reasonable sounding theory. Not that I'm saying that this sounds reasonable. I'm too biased because of how excited I was at actually having an idea for a theory to be able to step back and see if this sounds reasonable to anyone. But after playing Ruin, I have, I've had a lot on my mind to do with Five Nights at Freddy's. I've been almost constantly thinking about like, what are the secrets? What is the game trying to tell us? I went and completely 100%ed the whole DLC. I've never been motivated to 100% complete anything before. And it was really fun. Hell, I've rewritten this script that I'm actually reading right now three times now. This is the third iteration of it because I wasn't happy with the other two and I wanted this to be as good as it could be. I'm excited about the franchise again, which I kind of lost after watching playthroughs and theories on Security Breach because there was just so much to think about and there was so much conflicting narratives and it, it just kind of killed it off a bit for me. But Ruin has just been an absolute rekindling of the fire, if you like, and it even gave me my own ideas. I've almost definitely forgotten some things and misremembered details of and timings and whatnot which will put put into question how accurate my theory may be if you can think of anything if you know of anything that i've missed please let me know i want to be able to improve upon this theory to potentially have something that actually has almost no flaws to it because i might be able to find a, a better explanation because i still think that they're being a digital recreation of Charlie is what's happening here. It, it makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. I hope that I've done a good enough job of explaining myself. Again, go check out Rye Toast's own video because it was it really is a good video. I really enjoyed watching it. It was a very interesting video. There was a lot of good explanation about uh, his point and I think it was pretty good. Uh, subscribe to my channel or else I will forcefully feed garlic bread to you and that is a threat and it also is apparently becoming my catchphrase. Don't ask why, I said it randomly in a video and now it is a thing. Feel free to join the Discord where you can interact with me or friends. That's it and goodbye. I will see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this theory.